finer. He literally stood head and shoulders above the crowd. That is not a good reason for someone to be placed in a leadership position. But that is what happened. And by the time we get to chapter 15, God regrets and is sorry for making that choice. Isn't that interesting? The text says the Lord was sorry that he made Saul king over Israel. It appears from this reading that everyone makes mistakes. Even God can misread the character of someone. Even God can make a bad choice. So you know that the people will sometimes make poor choices. And while Samuel the priest grieved over Saul's dethroning and demise, God presents a plan for correction so the people could move on. Somebody needs to tell the people who still have Trump signs in their yard to let it go and move on. Somebody needs to tell these crackers that the time, hands of time cannot be reversed. We will never return to slavery. We have not, we will not have our blood bought right to vote erased. We have moved on from that and we will not go back to that. So God says, fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. This posed a problem for Samuel because he not only loved Saul, but he feared Saul would murder him if he initiated this God-ordained coup d'etat. Quite frankly, this God-ordained coup d'etat would not have been necessary if God had made the right choice in the first place. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he'll kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. God says, take an offering with you because you know how greedy kings and politicians tend to be. It's a throw off. 16.3 says, invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do and you shall anoint for me the one whom I named for you. Verse 16 and 4 says, Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably? To be sure, no family wanted to be identified as part of the resistance to Saul's government. But as I look at this text with a critical eye, I can see why Samuel and Jesse and the city elders of Bethlehem were trembling and afraid. They were plotting a revolution to overthrow Saul's government because God told them to do it. It was like they were looking for a reason and Saul gave them one earlier in chapter 15 by neglecting to do the will of God as it was given to him to do. But David shows up Say David shows up. David shows up with humility and grace, walking the, in the anointing before it was even applied to him. In verse number six, the search begins in earnest to see which one of Jesse's sons was the anointed one. Samuel first looked upon Eliab, who was tall and beautiful, and the obvious choice to be the next king. But the text says in verse seven, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God saw that Eliab's heart wasn't right for the position. Your heart got to be right if you're going to lead people. Here is a truism that is lost on many people who think that tall, dark, and handsome is the only kind of person who is fit for the kingship. You got to be more than just a pretty face to be the king. Your heart has to be right. If you're going to be a leader of God's people, you got to be able to bear other folks' burdens and feel other people's pain to be a leader of God's people. Jesse the father, hold on a minute. Don't get in front of me. Let me let me, let me, let me. I got about two pages. <laughs> Jesse, the father, started calling all his sons, one by one, Abinadab, Shammah, 
and all the rest of them, and one after the other, neither was chosen by Samuel. Verse 11 says, and Samuel said unto Jesse, here are all thy children, and he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and fetch him, for will not sit down until he come hither. As soon as he saw David, Samuel heard the voice of the Lord saying, Arise, anoint him, for he is he. This is he. This is the one is ruddy, who smells like sheep, who sleeps with sheep, and who cares for sheep. Samuel knew that the anointing was upon him, and so he applied it on him in the presence of the people who were gathered to see it. The text says, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Having done the work that was called by God to do, the text says, Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But oh, my sister and my brethren, in the very next verse, David will be thrust into a situation whereby his anointing could prove to be the source of trouble. The text declares in the verse after David's anointing was accomplished, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Saul's handlers, the politicians, and the head hunters began to look to find some therapeutic remedy for his unsettled spirit. They decided that music therapy would best suit his case, and Saul agreed with their diagnosis and their prescription, saying, provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. Verse 18 yeah, now come on. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty, valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me thy son, which is with the sheep. And your Bible declares that Jesse took an ass laden with bread and a bottle of wine and a kid and sent them by David, his son, unto Saul. And David came to Saul and stood before him and he loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer and Saul sent to Jesse saying let David I pray thee stand before me for he has found favor in my sight and it came to pass when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul that David took the harp and played with his hand so that Saul was refreshed and was well and the evil spirit departed from him. David provided the care and the comfort that Saul needed to shake that evil spirit off of himself and he was enabled to return to his kingly duties. David continued to walk in his anointing until Saul couldn't take it no more. By this time, David had infiltrated his family, was loved by his son Jonathan, and married his daughter Michael. And for the next two chapters, Saul sought to kill David. He was obsessed over David. 
so much so that he lost his mind. David's anointing protected him from Saul's craziness. And I want to suggest to you that you are anointed just like David was. You have the power and the capacity to avoid the madness of your enemies just like David did. You may have to run and hide, but God will deliver you. Yeah. You may have to disconnect every now and then, but the Lord will keep you. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will, God will, God will take care of you because your anointing makes you shine. Go ahead and shine. When your enemies try to block you, shine. Let your anointing flow and let the Lord handle the rest. Go ahead and shine. You ought to stand on your feet and wave your hand and shine. You were made to shine. So walk upright in your anointing like David walked in his. Go ahead and walk in your anointing like Jesus walked in his. Your Father God has anointed you just like God anointed David by the hand of Samuel. The love of Jesus has anointed us. His blood is smeared all over us. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed so walk in your anointing Jesus went upon Mount Calvary he took many stripes he had a crown of thorns placed upon his head they poked him in the side blood and water came running out of his body and he never said a mumble little word. Ain't God all right? Ain't the Lord all right? He hung on the cross, suffered, bled, and died from the sixth to the ninth hour. They took him down, put him in Joseph Barra tomb. He stayed there all night, Friday night. Didn't he do it, y'all? He stayed there all day Saturday didn't he do it y'all he stayed right there yeah all night Saturday night but early yeah early 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 Sunday morning he got up out of the grave had all power in the palm of his hand Ain't God all right? Won't God fix it? Ain't God able? Can't God do it? Somebody shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah, yeah. The Lord is all right. The anointing breaks the yokes. The anointing breaks the yokes. The anointing breaks the yokes that might be crowding your life. The anointing breaks the yokes that stop you from being able to achieve. The anointing breaks the yokes that block your blessings. The anointing that flows from the head down to the shoulders, down to the feet, even Aaron's feet. 
the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord anointed me with oil from my head to my feet. The Lord will anoint you with your head to the feet. The Lord is able, yeah. He's able. He's able. Oh, Abel, yeah, yeah, Abel, oh, Abel, yeah. The anointing will make you shine. Your anointing will make you shine. Shine in the face of your enemies. Shine in the face of your friends, shine. Yeah. Oh. The anointing won't let you retreat. The anointing flows on the head, down to the shoulders, down to the beard, down to the skirts of his garment. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Ain't God good? Ain't God worthy of your praise? Somebody shout yes! Shout yeah! Shout yeah! Shout yes! Shout yes! Yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my sister. He will give you brand new life. New life abundantly. Why don't you come? Why don't you come right now? This is your opportunity. You're standing all over the room. You are, we offer Christ to you, my brother. We offer Christ to you, my sister. Why don't you come right now? He will give you brand new life. New life abundantly. Why don't you come, oh, come on to Christ, oh, we offer Christ to you, oh, my brother. The Lord will bring new life. Bring a brand new life. New life abundantly. Life abundantly. Oh, oh why don't you come? Oh, 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 come on. Why don't you? Why don't you come? Oh Lord, ye who are weary and heavy laden, why don't you come? Oh, come on. 
cold Why don't you come Ye who are weary and heavy laden Oh come Why don't you come Oh To cry to Christ, to Christ, to Christ, to Christ. Amen. I say, I say. I say, oh, we have met the challenge to preach the gospel. None have accepted, but yet there is room. It is now time for us to make our circle of responsibility. Saturday, August 17th, our 9 to 10 Pathway to 10th Anniversary Meeting. I want to see everybody present, uh, everybody that's in this circle. I expect to see you on this Saturday as we continue to plan our anniversary, uh, which is coming up in October. April, the Sunday after Easter, that's right. So uh, we got a little time, but it's sneaking away from us very quickly. And we got to get this food pantry back up and running. That's why I'm over here by Marguerite so I can get some anointing off of her. So we can get this food pantry up and running. If you've been holding on to something, you know, in the sock drawer back in the left-hand corner of the sock drawer, pull it out and consider giving it so that we can get this food pantry back up. I guarantee you, the Lord will give you something else to put in your sock drawer. Yeah, I know he will. I know he's able. All right. It's time to go. It's our duty to fight for our freedom. It's our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Let's take it together. It's our duty to fight for our freedom. It's our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose but our chains. It's our duty to fight. It's our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We gotta love and support 
each other. We ain't got nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose but our chance. I said nothing to lose. We got nothing to lose but our chance. We got nothing to lose. We got nothing to lose but our chance. We ain't got nothing to lose. We got nothing to lose but our chance. Lord God, we thank you for this day, for everything that we've experienced. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your blessings, and we receive it all as we leave this place. We walk in our anointing that you have applied to us, and we appreciate and walk in it with pride. We ask that you would bless us, bless this house, bless this below community church, bless the little Zion Annex in a special way, oh God. Open up doors that have been closed and perform mighty miracles in our midst so that we might continue to offer you thanksgiving and praise for all of the wonderful and magnificent works that you work in our midst. We thank you, we love you, we bless you, we praise you. And we ask every blessing in the name of your son, our savior, sweet black Jesus, our Lord and savior, our liberator, our defender, and our soon coming king. And it's for his sake that we pray. Amen. 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 Ashe. 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 Now reach your hand up in the sky. Pull down a handful of promise and bring it into your body and shout, Harambe, Harambe, Harambe. That means let's all pull together. And if we pull together, we're going to be able to make it. Make sure you leave a gift. Make sure you leave a gift in the box before you leave. Nothing to lose but our chance. Got nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose but our chance. We ain't got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose but our chance.